uh, hi everyone uh, and welcome to this video titled routine transformer installation uh, testing transformers including distribution and power transformers are subjected to a class of tests we call them routine tests routine tests mean that every single transformer before leaving the factory they have to be tested and one category of those tests is the test for their insulation systems just to have to start uh, with some background why we need these tests uh, first of all transformers are usually subjected uh, to uh, normal and abnormal insulation stresses okay so when they are working at normal conditions even they have to continuously uh, work at 105 percent of the rate of voltage when delivering the full load and up to 110 percent of rated voltage under no load conditions so that is the normal operation of the transformers they have to withstand these stresses and this has to be done for an infinite period of time also, transformers are subjected to abnormal conditions, and those abnormal conditions will lead to abnormal installation stresses. Like, for example, when you have a fault, single line to ground fault will lead to the increase of the voltage on the other faults. Lightning events, switching events. So all these types of abnormal conditions will lead to abnormal stresses on the installation of the transformers. So the transformers should be able to withstand these stresses. Now we can categorize the, uh, the extra stresses or the abnormal stresses into two different categories. The first one called low frequency. So those are stresses, but at the power frequency or a bit higher than the power frequency. As I said, like, for example, when you have a single line to ground fault, you have a low frequency uh, stress, high voltage, but at a low frequency. Uh, ferroresonance is, is also somehow a low frequency phenomenon. On the other hand, transient from switching events, from lightning events, these are basically high frequency stresses. So before we give the transformer to the customer, we have to ensure that the transformer can withstand the low frequency over voltages and the high frequency over voltages. Now, I will just talk about distribution transformers here, where the low frequency stresses or routine test is a type of every transformer should be able to withstand those uh, low frequency routine uh, routine tests the transients for the distribution class transformers like lightning testing this we call them type tests but i will focus this talk talking only about the two different tests we use them to check the ability of the transformer to withstand low frequency abnormal voltage stresses before that, let's just have an idea about the insulation system of the transformers. So basically, there are two main components of the insulation system that we want to make sure that whenever there is an extra stress, they can withstand those stresses. The first one is that you can see here, this is one of the phases. This is the low voltage. This is the high voltage. And between them, this is, we call it the main cooling duct. This is uh, basically for cooling the transformer and insulation the high voltage from the from the low voltage. The, the core is basically grounded. The tank is also grounded. So the high voltage, basically, they are there is certain distance between the high voltage and the low voltage, between the low voltage and the ground, and the high voltage and the ground. And for this, we have what we call a clearance requirement high voltage to ground, high voltage to low voltage, and high voltage to, to ground. So we need to have a test to uh, make sure the transformer, whenever there is an over voltage, can withstand this type of test, and the clearance you have inside the transformer is enough. The second thing that the high voltage winding and the low voltage winding are basically turns. So there is an insulation between each turn or each layer in the high voltage, and in the low voltage. And that is a different test, will basically uh, test the insulation system 
turn to turn in the transformer. It doesn't test the clearance, but it, it does test the ability of the turn to turn to withstand any high voltages. OK, so let's go to the test. The first test is basically the applied voltage test or the high pot test. So I will talk about only the test that we do between high voltage and ground, how we do the test. This is the testing transformer, the supply voltage. It's a single phase, although I'm testing a three phase transformer, but we use a single phase transformer. Second, we connect all the terminals of the bushing together and we apply the high voltage to to the transformer high voltage bushing. So the stress in every phase will be exactly the same. On the other hand, we will ground the low voltage winding of the transformer. So basically I'm applying high voltage here. This is the high voltage here and everything is grounded. So I am testing the clearance between the high voltage and the ground, the high voltage and the low voltage. So basically when you come here, I'm testing the clearance between the high voltage and the low voltage between the high voltage and and the ground as as well and basically we apply certain voltage i will come to that voltages depends on the transformer voltage level for one minute if there is no failure happening if there is no sharp increase in the current then the transformer pass the test so this is basically what we call a destructive test it's a pass fail criteria now, these are some of the uh, voltage levels as per the IEC standard and the ANSI standard. So, for example, if you talk about distribution transformer, we are talking about uh, these uh, system voltage levels up to 36 kV. So, if the transformer, for example, is 13.8 kilovolt, 13.8, this is a very well known type of uh, voltage levels. So, we test it at 38 kilovolt. So, we apply 38 kilovolt for one, one minute. If it is 11 kilovolt, this is another voltage level. We apply 28 kilovolt and so on and so forth. So we apply this voltage to test the, the clearance. The second test is to test the insulation between the turns. Now here, this is the supply and the supply, as you can see it here, it's a three phase transformer. So here I am energizing the three phases not just one phase and connect all the high voltage bushings as one connecting point. No, here we apply a three phase voltage to the, to the transformer. And now here we need to double the voltage. We don't just apply the same rated voltage. We have to overstress the transformer because I'm testing the ability of the insulation system to withstand the high voltage. Same thing for the high bot test. I test it at a voltage level higher than the voltage levels that they are normally working at. Now, when we double the voltage here, here we need also to increase the frequency. Why is that? Because we know that the voltage per turn in the transformer, this is the voltage I am inducing in the turn to test the ability of the installation between the turns to withstand the voltage is equal to 4.44 times the frequency times B times A. B is the flux density. A is the cross-sectional area. Now, if I increase the voltage per turn to double the value, what will increase here? A is constant. And if my supply has the same frequency, so this is 60 hertz, for example, so this is also constant. So my B will increase to the double value. If my B increase double the value, I am forcing the transformer to go to deep saturation. There will be no induced voltage in the in the secondary or in, in the other side of the transformer. So I will have no induction basically, and I'm forcing the transformer to go deep in saturation. So what I do, I increase the frequency, double the frequency, or a bit higher than the uh, the double uh, the frequency value, so that I will keep the flux density at a lower value where we will have proper induction. Now, as per the standard, how long I have to apply this voltage? There is this formula, 120 times the rated frequency divided by the test frequency. So let's say that we have a 60 hertz system. So we apply 
double the voltage, we double the frequency. So the test frequency will become equal to 120 hertz. So the time will be equal to 120 times 60 divided by 120. So this will equal to 60 seconds. Now I increase, I can double the frequency. So the supply could be having 240 hertz. And this is the, in this case, will become equal to 120 times 60 divided by 240 hertz. And this will give me 30 seconds. And I can keep increasing the frequency to reduce the test time. However, the test time should not be less than 15 seconds. So again, this test is a pass fail criteria. If there is no high current, if there is no failure having the transformer, it means that the transformer passed the test. Now, when the transformer passed these two tests, meaning that the insulation level for both the clearance and the turn turn is basically good enough and the transformer will be ready for shipment.